If you have your Bibles, uh, turn to Matthew chapter 4, and we're going to start at verse 1. We have a lot of ground to cover here, and we're going to get through it, all right? And once you have your Bibles, please go ahead and signify it uh, by putting your finger there and raising it in the air as we do here. And say with a loud voice, I have the victory. I have the victory. And the victory is where? In my life as I apply the word. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 says this. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. Then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against any stone. Then Jesus said to him, It is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And again, the devil took him up to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms in the world and their glory and said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came to minister to him. May God had a blessing of reading and application of his word. Yes. Today I want to talk to you about the attitude you should have while going through troubled times. Pay attention, because what you're going to discover here is the key to handling your, uh, your challenging situations. As we walk through this passage, there is going to be four points I'm going to prove to you, and then I'm very quickly going to relinquish my stand. Number one, difficult times will come that will challenge you. That's point number one. Point number two, sin will offer a temporary solution to these times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The third point, stand fast on the commands of God and he will lead you through it. And the fourth point, I need you, they need you, we all need you to make it through. Grab your neighbor's hand and look at him square in the face. Just look at him like you're angry and say, you can do it. Let God lead you through it. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Oh, Jesus. Let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you right now, Lord, just for using me. I ask, Lord, that even now you remove me, you remove I, you remove myself and input your spirit through me, Lord. Lord, I'm also asking that you send a type of anointing today that breaks lifetime yokes. Send a type of anointing, Lord, that, that, breaks, that breaks the things that we wish we ought not do. Send the type of anointing that sets someone straight from this place, 14, 13, Date Street, that they can go and live the life that you led them to live. Lord, we want to thank you right here in Ecclesia. And we're going to thank you in advance for sending your word. In Jesus' name, everybody say, amen. You can do it. Let God lead you through it, all right? There will be difficult times when times will challenge, when life will challenge you, excuse me. These times will seem to come frequently and at a ferocious pace. The trials will tempt you to do the wrong thing in order to gain a temporary advantage. And moreover, these temptations will appear when the trial seems to be the worst. Mm -hmm. In our text here, we were just introduced to the correct way of how one should deal with life's challenging trials. We are privileged enough to view Jesus before he goes into the trial, while he is maneuvering through the trial, and even while he exits the trial. 
Everyone here will have a, cha uh, a challenge that they must overcome in life. And for you, it might not necessarily be a 40-day wilderness experience. No. Uh, for you, the challenge might be in your finances. For others, the challenge might be in your marriage. For another, the challenge might be with your child. For another, the challenge might be with the mother or father of your child. Mm -hmm. Wherever it is, your challenge is, and the devil sees an opportunity, he will use it in hopes to get you off course. Mm. Immediately, the Bible sets the preamble for this situation here, stating quickly that Jesus was led to the, uh, to the, to the wilderness by the Spirit. This lets us know that Jesus was not led by the Spirit by his own, own recognition. He didn't go there just because he wanted to. This lets us know that Jesus is not heading into the situation as a result of something he did wrong. This lets us know that Jesus is not heading into this situation looking for some twisted form of praise from the religious community. No, Jesus was led by the Spirit to a tough spot. He was led by the Spirit to a situation he knew was going to be challenging coming in. And church, our own situations pose great challenges for us when the Spirit of the Lord leads us. But I'm standing here today to tell you that you can conquer the challenge if you stand fast on God's commands and let him lead you through it. You can do it if you let God lead you through it. Yes, you can get there without having to sin. Oh, my God. You can get there without having to do wrong. Mm -hmm. And you can achieve your goals without having to cheat. Mm. You can stand fast on the commands of God without wavering. And you can pay your tithes without lacking in your life. You can tell the truth without having to smudge the facts. And you can walk hand in hand in marriage without having to take a sabbatical. You can accomplish your dreams without harming others to get there. And you can make it without having to stop. Mm. You can seize it. You can believe it. You can reach it. You can get there. You can stay there. You can live there. You can start. You can finish. You can end it. You can progress. You can attain. You can succeed. Don't let the devil trick you. You can do it. Go into the challenge just like Jesus did. Stand fast on the commands of God and let him lead you through it, acknowledging my life is in your hands, Lord. I don't know where you'll lead me, but I'll go wherever you take me, Lord. So, Lord, lead me. Oh, Jesus, lead me. Lead me, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, lead me, Jesus. Lead me. Oh, Lord, lead me to the situation that you want me to be in. Lead me to the area that you want me to go the most. Hmm. Lead me to the opportunity that allows my spirit to grow. Lead me to the place that I need to go further in you. Hmm. Lead me to the obstacle that creates the greatest challenge for me. Lead me to the environment that my flesh must overcome. Lead me to the personal battle that I need to overcome. Lead me to the rude person I need to speak to in order to be blessed. Lord, I'm mature enough to know that trials are only seasonal. And I'm mature enough to never give, to understand you will never give me more than you can bear. So, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get through this trial. It seems like I'm going crazy. But I don't know. But I trust you, Lord. However you maneuver me, Lord, just take your, don't take your spirit away from me. So, Lord, lead me. Oh, oh my God, my God, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, my God, my God. Uh-huh. Grab hold of somebody's hand who's sitting next to you real quick. Look at them right in the face and say, show them how to pray real quick and say, I acknowledge the challenge looks difficult, but Lord, I'm going to let you lead me. My God, my God, my God, my God. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get through it, Lord, but Lord, I'm going to let you lead me. <laughs> It looks difficult in front of me. I don't know how I'm going to get there. But, Lord, I'm going to let you lead me. <laughs> she cussed me out. And you want me to say what to her? But, Lord, I'm going to let you lead me. He hurt me bad. And you want me to forgive him for what? But, Lord, I'm going to let you lead me. I can't stand my mother-in-law. That woman drives me crazy. And you want me to do what for her? But, Lord, I'm going to let you you lead me. Oh, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, my God, my God. 
Give somebody a high five and tell them, let the Lord lead you through. Hmm. Oh, I feel like preaching. <clears throat> now, the wilderness is important to understand here because the wilderness itself is not the challenge that Jesus is led to. No, no. However, the wilderness here plays a significant role in this challenge that we as people just should not miss. Let's take a look at it again here so you don't think I'm making anything up. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit. This is verse 1. Jesus was led up by the Spirit. We've established he was led into the wilderness, the setting, to be tempted by the devil, the challenge. Jesus was led by the Spirit. He was led into the wilderness, the setting, to be tempted by the devil, the challenge. Oxford Dictionary defines the wilderness as uncultivated and uninhibited and unhospitable region, a, a position of disfavor. This is the place where people were banished to in medieval times. Uh, it was the place, it was, it was like the equivalent of locking someone up and throwing away the key. Uh, this was the area that, had, that, that you didn't want to be in. Uh, it was miles and miles of sure death. Jesus was led to a place in his life where everywhere he looked, he seen nothing that could help him. All he seen was miles and miles of disfavor. Miles and miles of rejection. Miles and miles of discouragement and pain. Miles and miles of no solution. You've been led to a place in your life right now where you, see, you only see nothing but the negative. You see no immediate relief coming soon. All you see is miles and miles of rejection. Mm -hmm. You see miles and miles of nothing but harder times. You see miles and miles of no solutions. You see miles and miles of no immediate relief. Mm -hmm. The significance of this setting for Jesus is much like the significance of the setting for you. You see, God has led you to a place in your life where the only way you are going to make it through this challenge is if you completely trust in him. Mm -hmm. And the devil likes it when God leads people to areas like this because he knows some people will never get out. They will either physically or spiritually die in the wilderness because they keep trying to conquer the challenge their own way. Mm -hmm. But allow me, though, to remind you, Mr. or Mrs. Unbeliever, that God is the same God who parted the Red Sea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And allow me to remind you, Mr. or Mrs. Unbeliever, that God is the same God who made a donkey talk when a stubborn man would not listen. <laughs> And allow me to remind you that God is the same God who delivered four boys from an earthly hell. And he is the same God who delivered a man named Daniel from the pit of sure death. He is the same God who elevated a slave named Joseph from the pit and he placed him into the palace. He is the same God who took a woman with the wrong qualifications and made her queen over all the land. He is the same God that turned water into wine when they needed it. And he is the same God that fed 5,000 people from a little baby boy's lunch. He is the same God who stopped the sun from going down. And he is the same God who reached into the heart of the grave and said, Lazarus, get up. I don't know who it is I'm talking to in this building. But you need to know that the same God who delivered them will deliver you. The same God who made a way for them will make a way for you. So don't let what the situation looks like fool you. Stand on the commands of God and let him lead you through. Mm. So I will never let someone tell me the challenge is too hard to get there. I will never let somebody tell me the obstacle is too high to get there. As long as I am standing on the commands of God, you can never tell me I can't get there. I don't know why it is you would let somebody tell you you couldn't do it. 
I don't know why it is you would let family discourage you. I don't know why it is that you would take friends' advice about the situation. All you need to do is stand on the commands of God, and he will get you there. Oh, I feel like preaching. Oh, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Oh, help me, Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Mm. Slap somebody's hand and tell them, get there. Uh -huh. Slap the other person's hand and tell them, get there. Mm. Point number two. Sin will offer a temporary solution to these times. Now, sin is a quick fix to a long-term situation. It's like placing a Band-Aid on top of a broken arm. The long-term situation is the challenge that you were led to, and the quick fix is the wrong but very often easy way out of that situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As we explore these temptations just a little bit closer, we will discover the unique keys that will help us in our Christian walk. Mm -hmm. Through this passage, we will learn three distinct occasions that the devil tempts Jesus to sin. We're going to learn about those. We're also going to learn about the main motivation uh, what, what the devil is trying to do behind the temp temptations. Uh, let me clean that up a little bit. We'll also learn the devil's main motivation behind the temptations, uh, what, what he's trying to get Jesus to really do, all right? Let me explain my position about the main motivation behind the devil's purposes of the temptations first before I go into the distinctions of the three temptations. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. The devil's main purpose here is to try to get Jesus to use his heavenly authority in this passage to fix the challenging situation that Jesus' flesh is in. That's his main purpose here. This is the crux of the challenge that Jesus was led to. You see, the devil knew that if he could get Jesus at this point to use his heavenly authority to fix the challenging situation that his flesh was in, then he knew that no human flesh would ever be able to get through a challenge without having to cheat. Remember this, the devil only comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he knew that if he could get Jesus, our example, at this point, then, then anybody who, who patterned themselves after Jesus would successfully uh, be destroyed, all right, because Jesus didn't get through the challenge right, all right? Jesus is our example. Much like you are the example for your family and your circle of influence. Mm -hmm. Every time you lie a little bit to get out of the situation, expect those who pattern themselves after you to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every time you yell and scream in anger, expect those who pattern themselves after you to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Every time you build a brother or sister up in love, Expect those who pattern themselves after you to do the same thing. Every time you encourage those who look up to you, expect those who pattern themselves after you to do the same thing. Every time you find a peaceful alternative to a hostile situation, expect those who pattern themselves after you to do the same thing. Shake somebody's hand and tell them, I'm going to be a good pattern because someone needs me to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to be a good pattern because somebody needs me to be. Yeah, Daddy, I need to see how you deal with Mama when you're frustrated with her. So I can pattern myself after you. Mm -hmm. Mama, I need to know how you deal when you're angry at Daddy. So I can pattern myself after you. Mm -hmm. Mentor, I need to see how you handle hostile situations. So I can pattern myself after you. Mm. Ministers, I need to see how you disagree and come back together for a common cause. So I can pattern myself after you. Mm. Role model, I need to see how you function through turbulent times. So I can pattern myself after you. Mm. Now from these temptations here, we learn three distinct occasions that sin will come. Now, they're not the only, uh, only times when sin will come, but they definitely are times when you can count on sin prese uh, presenting itself as a temptation to you. From the first temptation of bread, we learn that sin 
will tempt you when you are at or near a weak point. Okay, sin will tempt you when you're at or near a weak point. Amen. From the second temptation, which was uh, the challenge to throw himself from the temple, we'll learn that sin will tempt you when your personal ambitions become priority. Mm -hmm. From the third temptation, which was the opportunity to rule nations, we will learn that sin will tempt you when you are thrusted to the pinnacle of your success. Let's start with the first temptation. All right? In verses 2 and 3, Jesus, uh, Satan tempts Jesus with bread. Uh, he tempts Jesus when he very likely is hungry and physically weak. Whenever your flesh senses it has an immediate need, your flesh will do anything to satisfy that need. So Satan tempts you at the point where your flesh is weak, yes, at the point where your flesh senses that it has a need. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make you a bad person or any less of a Christian, no. I mean, surely you've excelled in other parts of your life. You know, you're a good educator. You're good in your career. You know, you're good at what you do. You're a good parent. You know, you've, you've made savvy business decisions. But all it, all, all, it, it just means that the devil's going to poke you at the point where it is that you have a weakness, the point that's gone unchecked. That's all that means. And it's not always physical weakness after a fast in which the devil will tempt you, no. Some people are weak in other areas of their life. Uh-huh, yeah, some people are, you know, financially weak. Uh, some people are emotionally weak. Mm -hmm. Some people are mentally weak. Some people are faith weak. Some people are lack of companionship weak. Some people are anger management weak. Mm -hmm. Some people are cute guy weak. Mm -hmm. Some... <laughs> Some people are beautiful woman weak.